and welcome to More Sewing Center's Virtual Sew Fun Club for the month of April. My name's Michelle Rank, and I get to be your host for this very special event tonight. And I tell you it's special because we've got a very special guest tonight that I can't wait to introduce to you. But before I do, I need to talk a little bit about business with More Sewing Center. Now, as you're aware, we have a website, mores-sew.com. And on that website, you can access all important things that are going on at Moore's. You can access the classes to our five wonderful locations here in Southern California, as well as events that are coming up. So don't forget to utilize that wonderful website, moors-so.com. Now with our virtual so fun club, we always have a gift. And tonight we have these special rose gold scissors. It's a set of three different items. We have two scissors and we also have a thimble. Now the value of these is $39.95 and three of you are gonna be very lucky. Now in order to win these, you need to like, comment, or share on this episode tonight. And then after Virtual So Fun Club is done airing, around April 30th, we will be drawing the winners and we will announce them on Facebook. So don't forget, like, comment, or share to have a chance at these wonderful rose gold scissors. So with that, we also, I want to take just a minute and talk about the pricing that we have on these special episodes with Virtual So Fun Club. Now, Moore's has gone to a lot of um, heartache and um, a lot of time on my end to make sure that we are bringing you the best possible prices for all of the vendors that we bring in. And tonight is no different. So we have secured through our special vendors, special pricing that we are passing right along to our loyal customers. Now, when I say special pricing and secured that, I absolutely mean it. We have gone to these vendors and um, asked for a special discount that we get to pass on to you. And then I go through and I go through all of the websites and see what prices are for all of the items that we're bringing in. And it takes me a couple days, I check everything out, and I make sure that we are offering you the best possible price for all of our virtual so fun prices and the vendors that we bring in. So I want you to feel secured that you can order these products here tonight and you're gonna get the best prices out there, guaranteed. So with that said, I um, wanna introduce our special guest tonight. And let me bring in John Brady from Guidelines from Quilting. Come on in, John. <laughs> hey, Michelle. Good to see you. Oh, good to see you too. It is such an honor to be here at Moore's. Um, if I don't know, you know, where you're watching this, but if you ever get a chance to come into Moore's, uh, absolutely some of the best quilt sewing shops in the world, right here. Well, that's nice to know. Some of the best people too. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, you know, it, it's one of those things that goes hand in hand. And I know that the first time I met you was many, many years ago at a quilt show, mm -hmm. and you impressed me then. And oh, your products you. speak for themselves. Mm. And I know our customers are gonna get a lot of information here tonight, and they're gonna understand exactly how to use these products to the best for their quilting, cutting, but not only for quilting. Keep in mind, if you cut fabric for embroidery or anything else, these tools are what you're gonna wanna use for all of your cutting. Well, thank you. <laughs> you are so welcome. So we have lots to talk about, and we've got lots of special pricing, and we've got special kits where we put together items that are gonna be the best as far as what you have here tonight. And tell us a little bit about how you got involved in making these wonderful rulers. Oh, okay. Uh, well, you know, a lot like George, my dad had a business, uh, mm -hmm. sewing and vacuum, and uh, in, in his business, they did more with vacuums and, and uh, also water softeners, stuff like that. The sewing department really wasn't uh, a big part of it. 
So I wound up coming back. Uh, it's kind of a long story, but I wound up going there, and they said, well, we'll let John run the sewing department. I mean, uh -huh. you can't hurt something that's not really <laughs> doing too well anyway. And much to everyone's surprise, and, and mine actually maybe the biggest, mm -hmm. we became, uh, when Sergers came out, we became one of the biggest Serger mm -hmm. dealers in the country. And I, I, in fact, used to be an expert on, uh, some of you may, I mean, I, today it's, it's crazy. I mean, there's what, eight thread surgers? Do, do, do they go higher than that? Or is there more than Not eight? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. <laughs> well, when I started, we had one of the first brands that was a convertible three or four thread. And it was really the first one out there that could do that, which had a big advantage because the three thread would stretch on a knit and the four thread would hold up on a woven. Whereas all the other surgers at that time, you either had to get a three thread or a four thread. So I wound up per in the country, actually, uh, for the company doing seminars on the sergers. And about around that same time, the rotary cutter came out. Ah, and I know that revolutionized the way that we cut fabric. Uh, absolutely. How many of you would give up your rotary cutter today? Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, but it made a lot of changes in the way things were done. And one was in the quilt rulers. I mean, it's a funny thing, but when I, I happen to know when, when the rotary cutter first came out, they gave it to some quilters and they looked at it and they said, nah, <laughs> never, never going to go any place with this. Uh, you know, you know, one of the reasons why? Why is that? <laughs> they didn't know they needed a cutting mat. Ah. <laughs> so they said, here's a rotary cutter. Yeah. And so they're cutting on cardboard and going, what good is this going to do? Plus, it's like they were, they were used to using templates. Right, right. So they were cutting individual pieces and they thought, well, the rotary cutter is not really going to help. Eventually, they got the straight edges and they did those in different widths. And then mm -hmm. after that came the rulers with the lines on it. And that's when it really started to take off because now you could measure whatever you want to oh cut. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, do long straight cuts, made it real easy. But I thought there was a problem. And I know many of you out there have gotten really good at doing this, but to me, it didn't make sense to have to go, let me see, two and a half. Where's two and a half? There it is there. And there it is down there. Okay, got it. And then, of course, you cut and the ruler does that. <laughs> yeah, I can't tell you how many times when you're cutting the width of the fabric from top to bottom, if you use your ruler and you line up those lines, and when you go to cut, it doesn't matter who you are, if you're cutting standing up or if you're cutting sitting down, as soon as you get to that far edge, things can get crazy. And that's mm -hmm. where your ruler takes care of those problems. Yeah, well, you know, funny thing, this is actually just an Ulfa ruler, and I've got uh, OmniGrid, uh, it really doesn't matter the brand of ruler, mm -hmm. we actually have a kit, and before I even show you here, just put your finger down there and feel how that doesn't move. Yep. Yeah, the reason, in fact, you can move my whole mat with it, <laughs> <laughs> but the fabric in the ruler stays steady. The reason is, uh, on the edges here, we have mm. what we call grip strips. Yep. And these really do work differently than anything else you've ever tried before, because what they do is they make it so that all the pressure you put down in the middle of the ruler now, because that's, you know, you said how it slips at the end, right? Yep. Yeah, that's because if I turn it this way, now I'm not on the grip strips, my finger's like a pivot point, and it can do that. With the grip strips on, all the pressure goes to the edges, it eliminates that pivoting. So it, uh, it really just makes it so much easier. But I just, you know, started to, I'm sorry, you wanted to say well, something? Well, I, I wanted to interject because Please. These grip strips go from all the way across. Now, some of you may have different products yep. where it's just a little dot in the corners. Mm -hmm. That's not what we have here. You have security across the whole ruler, which changes the whole cutting perspective. Yeah, I appreciate you saying that, too, because uh, it, 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 people sometimes ask, well, how many layers of fabric I can cut? Mm -hmm. Well, it really depends on your rotary cutter, but with a regular ruler, I mean, without the grip strips, they, they really get unstable. Mm -hmm. With the grip strip, half my pressure is going right directly on the fabric, and the other half is gripping the cutting mat. So it really solidly grips the fabric right where you're cutting, too. Yeah, and how many of you have also had that warp in the center? Mm -hmm. These grip strips will make it so you don't get that warp in the middle of your cutting. So yeah. you're getting precise cuts. And it kind of reminds me before I go on here, just real quick, they just go on with adhesive and you can cut them, they're, they're 12 inches long in the package. So I've got two on each edge here and one on each edge of a 12 inch, but you can also cut them, you can even bend them. You know how hard it is to cut with these curves. Oh yeah. Things, yeah. <laughs> so the same idea, it just takes a fraction of the effort now to hold it. All the pressure gets concentrated on the edges. Uh, grip strips were, uh, really one of the first things we did, and it's always been one of our best-selling products, but our best-selling product right now, we call the Quilt Ruler Upgrade Kit. Ah. Because I started off with 
trying to find that two and a half inch line. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, because I have the grip strips on there, I have space, whoops, that I can add a guide now to the ruler. And the whole secret to the guide is I had to figure out, well, how do I get the guide to be straight? Because it's mm -hmm. not going to do you any good if it's not straight right, down the full right. length of the ruler. The answer is a stretchy band. <laughs> oh, very cool. Yeah, and I tested a lot of material. Nothing worked. Nothing was strong enough. And I finally found this material they use on conveyor belts that run like, you know, 100,000 RPMs, mm -hmm. you know, all day long. This stuff is incredibly tough, has great memory, and all I have to do is clip it on one end, stretch it, clip it on the other, and that band pulls it perfectly straight. Pretty cool, which, huh? Which is important, once again, for precision cuts. Yeah, and I know a lot of people, uh, because it is hard to find the lines on the ruler by eye, so a lot of people put tape on, but you've got to stick it down, and then you've got to peel it off. Once you put the guide on and you have the grip strips on, you just slide it. So whatever you're trying to cut, like if I want to do a two and a half, I'll just go two and a half here, two and a half here. I don't even have to look in the middle because that band pulls it straight. But if you do look straight down in the middle there, you'll see it's right Absolutely. on that line I set it to. And did you notice that this is not one of your rulers? This is a regular ruler that I'm sure we all already have in our home. <laughs> You know, that, I, that's the reason it's one of our best selling products is that you don't have to get another ruler. It works with what you already have. So, yeah, I've got a, this is a uh, OmniGrid here. A lot of people have those. Same idea. Set the guide, slide up to the fabric, and it just catches the fabric edge. And because I've got the grip strips on, it's so much easier to hold when I'm cutting, too. Right, right. So the speed you can do this is really fast. And I also have, this is actually our uh, quilt ruler connector, mm -hmm. which I'll show you a cool thing you can do with that. But one thing is I can actually use it as a handle. And I call it an open hand handle because this is the way I normally hold the ruler anyway. So like if you, well, like everybody out there, you probably got a stash <laughs> of fabric. Uh, you can set the t to the two and a half inch line, make your own, um, what do you call them? Uh, jelly rolls. Uh-huh, jelly roll right? cuts, yep. yeah. So uh, just slide up and cut, slide up and cut. Now I don't even have to move my hand. And, and jelly rolls are all the rage. That's what you're gonna see a lot of quilts that come out with. Those two and a half strips um, are everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you're going to take the jelly roll, you can take it to make your slices, you can do it the full width of the fabric, and then turn it and make your other individual cuts the other direction. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So take your stash, set the guide, make your own jelly rolls. Save you a lot of money, too. <laughs> but just, just to show off here a little bit, because I know every quilter loves when they see two and seven eighths in a pattern. Ah, it's the seven eighth rule. <laughs> <laughs> that is every time I do it, you're, if you look in the middle again, that is fabric is exactly on that two and seven eighths inch line. Yep. It's the combination of the grip strips and the, that stretchy band, and it just all works together to make it super easy. Whatever measurement you're cutting, just do that. And yeah, you're right. Once you get done cutting your strip, go down the strip, cut it into squares. In fact, there's a 12 inch guide in there too. So I can switch and go down and cut my squares with the 12 inch ruler. That's amazing. Yeah, so there's everything in here for both your uh, 12 and 24 inch rulers. We stay mistake proof and slip proof, both your 12 and 24 inch rulers. And those are good for lifetime or how? They, they uh, I, I mean, the grip strips are never gonna wear out. You're uh -huh. never gonna break that stretchy band. Uh, there's even a little trick to, uh, you know, because I just leave it on. Uh -huh. And I have never had a, I, I mean, the, the memory on that band is incredible. But uh, there is a way that you can uh, shorten it if you needed to. And okay. we, we'll, we have that on our website. So honestly, I, I have never had one wear out. Well, I've never had I a know, customer have one wear out. I've had <laughs> grip strips on some of my rulers for years. And they don't become gummy. They don't get misshapen. They're just there. And you don't have to think about them. You buy them, put them on, and you're good to go. Yep, it really is true. And our connector here, I'll show you, I, I was using it as a handle, but we call uh, this our perfect for pattern set is actually these three tools, the connector, the upgrade kit, and the seam guide setter, which I'll show you the seam guide setter in a second. But I'll show you a little trick here because the very first step before you start cutting, you know, everyone looks at the fabric guide and says, that's fantastic, but how, you know, I got to get my edge straight first. Because once you get the edge straight, the fabric guide keeps it straight because you're mm -hmm. just lining up to the guide. But with our connector here, I can put it on this ruler, and it has little alignment tabs is what is catching right here, and then I have a lip edge down here, so it makes it real easy to make a perfect uh, corner square. Oh. So now I've got an easy way to square up the fabric. You'll have to, a little imagination, I'm going to just use my short piece of fabric, but if I'm lined up, like if I've got, this is my fold down here, mm -hmm. so I've got my full width of fabric here, and all I want to do is straighten up that edge, 
Normally, with one ruler, I've got to go to the opposite side of the fabric, right? Correct, yeah. Which nobody wants to have to move the fabric after they get it all straightened up. So by using two rulers, you can go to the... Oh, by the way, at the shows, I love every time I show this, people say, well, I have my friend hold the other ruler. <laughs> or I put a 10-pound weight on it, or, you know, all these different things. Here, it's all connected. Yeah. So if I line up straight down here, I know this is straight there, and then this just has little release tabs on it. So I just, and by the way, with the grip strips on, notice how nothing moved there? Absolutely. Well, of course it's you know, secured. you have it. It's secured, <laughs> yes. So then I can straighten up my edge and then just start cutting my strips right away. Okay. So there's one other step. I've got all my pieces perfectly cut out. Mm -hmm. And so the next thing I need to do is? Is sew them together. Yes, yes. I, knew, I knew you were gonna be right there with See, me. See, I am a quilter. <laughs> so this is what we call our super easy seam guide setter. And by the way, I don't know, have you found this out where people get really confused about the scant quarter inch? Well, I have yes and no. Yes and yes no. Yes and no. There's okay. some people that are diehards, and then there's other people that are the other way. So it goes, you know, it depends upon what you've heard and who you believe, so to speak, like most things. So. Well, that's, that's kind of what I'm saying. Yeah. Because a lot of people, they, they think that there's two different seam allowances for quilting, and there really isn't. No. No. It's really what you want, and we do show uh, uh, right here on the package. You can see here we say the scant quarter you sew plus the thread in the fold should equal a full quarter. Because every time you cut a quilt piece, every pattern, what they're doing is they're giving you the finished size plus an extra quarter inch, just like Correct. it used to always be. What you're trying to do is take out an exact quarter inch. The problem is, is that if you sew a full quarter inch, the thread in the fold actually add a little bit more to it. So then it becomes... And people don't believe that. Well, yeah, I know. It, yeah. You know, and depending upon the the width of your thread that can change too so there's so many different elements where if you are trying to match up your blocks later mm -hmm. and things aren't perfect you have to think about the big picture yeah. um the fold have you done a crisp fold line yep and there's just so many things and this is taking one more thing to make it precise and easier to line things up yeah it does it, it and, and what i wanted to do is i wanted to make it really really simple well, like everything, you know, like the fabric guide, our whole, my whole thing is I look at something and I say, how can I make it a lot simpler? How can I take the guesswork out of it? So this really takes the guesswork out of it because the setter, you just put a seam guide in the setter. You know what? I'm going to grab a sewing machine so we can show it on the machine. Well, one second. I'll okay. be right back. <laughs> All right. And I'll just show you if you take, if you can see it uh, right here, what I did is there are some, um, similar products that, that kind of do the same thing, but they have little holes in them. And then you've got to poke the needle down into a little hole in the center. What I wanted to do here, because every once in a while you'll, you'll find, you'll, you'll, you know, you're trying to get it in that hole and you break the needle. And I said, let's just put a hook on it. And then magically, poof, a sewing machine appears. Yay! That's amazing. <laughs> okay. So what we did, now what I want to do is lower the needle. If I can see where it's at here. There you go. Am I getting it? There we go. And the presser foot's up. And then all I have to do is hook this on the needle. So even like I was talking about the little holes, I mean, I just did that backwards, not even really looking. And yet that, by hooking that on the needle, that is gonna set that guide right at the scant quarter inch. So the guides, you just peel the paper off to expose the adhesive, hook it on your needle and put it down. Now you can see here that I can also adjust it where I want it for a particular machine before I set it down. Okay, so if it's a drop-in bobbin, or a regular type of bobbin on the side, you have those adjustments where you yeah. can move or it around. how wide the foot is. You can, you can okay. position it exactly where you want, or then the peel bed. the paper off. Yeah, but in fact, you just mentioned something that I did, was gonna get to, because this does have a top-loading bobbin. And mm -hmm. one thing I don't wanna do is keep having to peel the guide off every time I need to load the bobbin. So you can see this one here uh, has a split in it. Oh, okay. So what you can do is hook it on the needle, and see exactly where the cover opens. And then in this case, like this isn't exactly for this machine, but I would mark right where that cover opens and then just take my rotary cutter, split the guide like I have here. And so this half would be on the cover, that half would be off. And then every time I go to load the bobbin, I'm not having to peel the seam guide off. So the beauty of that is, let me see if I've got it completely down pat. Okay. So we all know if we cut our fabric perfectly mm -hmm. with a guide, with those grip strips, we're mm -hmm. going to have a perfect cut. Yeah. Now, if we sew them with, say, if you have a quarter inch foot with a flange, that's mm -hmm. going to have another guide. But also, we're going to have this guide to guide the fabric to the foot yeah. so that it's really going to make it difficult 
to not get a straight <laughs> seam. Yeah, I, I tell you, what people like about these guides is they're just the right height. I'll see if I can kind of pretend like I'm doing it here, to where if you put your finger on the guide, it'll just guide right mm -hmm. against the edge of that guide. So it just really does take the guesswork out of getting that accurate scant quarter inch seam allowance. And so we call the, the three of these tools together, we call them our perfect for pattern set because you've got the connector makes it easy to square up the fabric accurately. Uh, the upgrade kit makes it easy to cut the pieces accurately. And then the seam guide setter makes it easy to sew them together accurately. So the only other thing you need to do is press and don't stretch your fabric when you press right. it. Right, and that's a whole nother show yeah. here. <laughs> but let me step in real quick here. So we have the perfect pattern set mm -hmm. here, and that's one of our special prices that we've secured for our Moore's Virtual So Fun Club. Now, normally that would be $56.85, but our special price here tonight is only $45.49, John. Oh, okay, that's really good. Yeah, so <laughs> like I said, this is gonna be perfect for you cutting and having precise cuts. Now, what's next? What are we gonna go to next, John? Well, it's, it's kind of funny. I'm actually gonna now go backwards a little bit. Okay. And I think we'll maybe change things up here a little bit, and I'm gonna show you where the quilt ruler upgrade kit, the ideas all started. Okay. So John, where did the idea for the upgrade kit come from initially? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> it's actually the, the first thing I made. I mean, the, the first thing again, like I was saying earlier, is how I looked at people lining up. I mean, the, the, the quilt rulers with lines revolutionized quilting, absolutely. But it never made sense to me to have to pick out the lines by eye. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a thing called parallax where the angle you're looking at it, you can think you're perfectly lined up, but you're not. In fact, the truth of the matter is everybody out there knows this. If you're lining up by eye, it's easy to be one side of a line at the bottom of the ruler yes. and the other side of the line at the yes. top. And it could, could be just the angle you're looking at it, but also you're doing that over and over again and you're trying to cut accurately. You just can't do it by eye. I, I, I mean, I know there's some people who do real well with it, but it just makes more sense to me to have a guide. Well, and let me interject here. I've taught sure. classes before, and I've been um, where classes are being held, and people, their, their blocks just don't line up. And when I go to look at their strips and what they've cut, more often than not, it's because what they're starting off with sewing, those strips, are not precise. And that's where these tools are gonna take that heartache away to where you're gonna have a more precise finished size block. Yep, uh, and we get comments online all the time from people saying that they just couldn't cut straight. Both the upgrade kit, but what the, the very first thing I did was I just made the, the guidelines ruler. Now this, this is a newer version, but mm -hmm. we always had a guide built in here. And the difference is, um, with the guidelines ruler, one of the biggest differences, they're not made of acrylic like all the other rulers are made. Ah. Uh, they're actually made of polycarbonate, which is 25 times stronger than acrylic. And uh, I don't know, well you, I don't know, you said you didn't see it, but the last time I was here I had George uh, hit one with a baseball bat. Oh, well I refreshed <laughs> and I've seen the light yeah, about yeah, over yeah, there. Almost took Get the light it, yes. It. And, and I still demo with that ruler today. I mean, polycarbonate is just virtually unbreakable. If you didn't know, like the lenses in your glasses are made of polycarbonate. It's lightweight, but 25 times stronger than acrylic. So I can do something you just would not do with acrylic. I can have a slot in the ruler. Mm -hmm. So normally, if this were acrylic and I had a slot in it, uh, you well, just know it's going to break. Well, there'd be fatigue and it's going to break over yeah. time with the wear and tear. Yeah, or just one drop and you know, they, they chip easy and they break easy. So these are polycarbonate, they're unbreakable. So here I can just build the guide in. And I just slide the guide to the measurement I want. So show me once again how easy it is to slide that guide over. So if you want to have a three inch, you just literally slide that yellow bar. Yeah, I'm gonna go to three and a half here just to add my seam allowance. Perfect. And I am on that three and a half inch line. And it just, the other thing is if you feel the bottom right here, mm -hmm. the lines are raised. Oh yeah. So the guide actually fits into those lines. So when you click it in there, it's actually self-centering onto the line, which is definitely an advantage over the upgrade kit. I mean, I. You can set the, the guide on the upgrade kit. You, you just have to do it by eye at the top and bottom, and then you can check in the middle and it's perfect. But with the guidelines ruler, I'll just go here to, well, we'll do two and seven eighths again, since everybody loves that yes, one. Yes, the seven eighth rule. Yep. Now, does everyone understand what that means? So if you are want to cut, say, a five inch block, 
and I think I have one right here. So if you want to cut a five inch block for a half square triangle, remember you're going to add in that quarter inch, but if you add seven eighths, you're going to have the perfect size to where everything lines up. And that's where the seventh eighth rule comes in. Yeah, and I'm going to get into that a lot more here <laughs> in a little bit, but, but that's where those numbers do come from. So two and seven eighths is actually the measurement for a two inch finished half square triangle. And wouldn't you like to be able to do that? <laughs> yep, and have everything precise. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And again, these have the grip strips came from the guidelines ruler too. They're built in on the edges already. Like I say, it's polycarbonate. It'll never chip or break on you. Oh, and one more thing. I'm going to have to turn it this way for just a second. But did you notice this? It's yes. kind of hard to see. This is a weapon. round <laughs> It's a weapon. <laughs> okay, it's a weapon. Okay. I will admit it. I have um, sliced my hands open several times. I like guides and I like to be able to protect myself because <laughs> I mean, and I quilt a lot, but you just never know when it's going to get squirrely on you. So this, go ahead, talk well, about your wonderful my, my feature sister, here. My sister trying to get something done Christmas Eve and wound up in the hospital. Yeah. So this is, if I can get it at the right angle, can you see it there? It's a finger guard right here. So when I'm cutting along the edge here, I've got a protective barrier in front there and it's just, it, it just makes so much sense. You, it's a round razor, it's a weapon, a round razor blade, <laughs> and it's nice to have a guide on there. Now you can, it, it's easy to take it off because if you're, if you want to take it somewhere or storing it, it's nice to be able to take it off. But I do, I, now that I cut with it on there, I don't feel comfortable without it. Without it's it, just, yeah. It's just so nice <laughs> to know that my, my uh, fingers are protected there. So again, any measurement, you can do that same thing. If you want to make your own uh, jelly roll, set it to two and a half, slide up to the edge. I should do it from the perspective you can see it there. And that guide just catches the fabric's edge. And again, on the guidelines ruler, it lo actually locks into the measurement lines. So it's even easier to get exactly to the line that you want to uh, cut on. Now, John, are they one eighth increments on Every your ruler? Every eighth inch, it okay. clicks in, absolutely. So perfect, yeah. yeah. Uh, but there's probably something you might be wondering now. You're saying, well, that looks nice. That's a six by 12. What if I need to cut my full width of fabric? Yeah, what yep. are you gonna do? Well, I don't even make that ruler that long. Yeah. <laughs> what I do, because here's another thing. You ever, uh, well, you, you teach. You, you, yeah. you have people coming into classes with a ruler sticking out of a backpack. Yep. I made special bags Did to you? accommodate my rulers at okay. the tall, yeah. Uh, and another thing is you can't fit a 24-inch ruler in the case with your machine. No, no, you, know? you can't. Well, now, some of the new ones, maybe. Well, Still not, I'd, I'd have to measure. Where's that? Where's that? <laughs> okay. Top of the line probably, one over there? Yeah, <laughs> probably not, though. I mean, a 24-inch ruler, it just doesn't fit anywhere. Well, here's what we did. Here's my six by 12. Here is my guidelines ruler connector because the connector idea came from doing the guidelines rulers too. And here I now have a 24 inch ruler. Just like that. Yep. Just like that. Perfect for travel. Absolutely. Perfect for storing. Um, it, it's just amazing the fact that you can take one ruler, make it into two and you have the two different pieces. Yeah. Now I bet you can put it in different configurations. Oh, you're did I steal your thunder? You <laughs> did. I was just about to get there, but it, it's still pretty cool. I can go this way and make the corner square. Wow. Great for squaring up. And if I have to do a wider cut, I don't have to get more rulers. I can take the same two rulers, put them together side by side. So technically, how many rulers is this with the two? You are so good. That's that was exactly what I was going to get to. <laughs> If you have two rulers and a guy, I got two guidelines rulers and a connector, you've got a six by 12, mm -hmm. a six by 24, a 12 inch square and a corner square, all with the same two rulers. They won't slip. You don't have to line up by eye and you're never going to nick chip or break them. Wow. Now, did you hear that again? So multiple rulers in this set, you could get one set and you can be covered for basically all of your cutting. Yeah, and the cool But I know there's more. I know you got more up your sleeve, John. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we have people that buy three, four, five. Mm -hmm. I've even had some long armors buy six rulers. You can connect them all together. I mean, it's not like you can pick six of right. them up together, but you can have them, you can have a nice long straight edge mm -hmm. like that to do it. Uh, and um, I, I lost track of what I was going to say. Oh, now. I'm oh, so oh, sorry. No, there was one more thing. Uh, very, very simple idea, but ha have you taught classes where people are doing diamonds? I have, yeah. I have, and I've been in classes where I've done diamonds too. Yeah. Doesn't it seem like a driver's ed class sometimes? Because everybody's yes. going, where's, wait a <laughs> where's minute, those 60 lines? degrees, where's 60 those degrees. Lines? Yeah. yeah, we also have what we call an angle line marker. Okay. So I had it on the 45. Wouldn't it be nice to go, okay, I want to do a 60 degree diamond, 
mark the line. There you go. Now wait, we need to see that on camera so oh, that I'm we sorry. understand. <laughs> what he's done is he's moved this little white piece here to the line that shows that, that angle that we need to cut now. Yep, so I had it on the 45, I moved it down to the 60, and then we'll just pretend I'm doing it here. But you'd cut your angle, uh, actually it'd be more like this here. So cut so your So you're going to line up your line of the fabric on there, and then you cut. Yeah, yes. you, you do have to do the angle line by eye, but you, you generally you're only doing that once. So I can carefully get lined up there. But the great thing is then I go back to the guide, and I just go down my strip and right. I cut my 60 yeah. degree diamonds. Absolutely. And the great thing about the fabric guide, if you're doing it by eye, you got to go back and check your angle, right? Because it's going to get off a little bit doing it by eye. With the fabric guide, your angle stays, your, uh, when you square up the fabric, it stays as you're cutting. The fabric guide just makes everything so much simpler. Right. And like what I, I, I can't stress enough, as far as being a quilter and um, being in a class, the goal is to have precise blocks. And angles can be some of those difficult things. So if you start off with the correct size fabric, before you start sewing, you're already so much farther ahead of the game. And yeah. that's where this beauty, as far as the lineups and the ruler cutting, mm -hmm. are so important. Because if you don't start with straight cuts in the start, then your finished piece is gonna be a little wonky. Absolutely, it's, it's nice to pick up the pieces, line them up and go, huh, they fit. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so nice, because otherwise it's like, wait a minute, what happened? And of course, you know, without a fabric guide, sometimes you just completely line up on the wrong line. It's so much nicer to always have exactly the same top to bottom every yep. single time. And then, uh, we, w you know, like we talked earlier with the uh, Quilt Roller Upgrade Kit, the next step is sewing the pieces accurately. So we do have uh, the Perfect for Pattern sets uh, with the Guidelines Ruler too. So if you get like two Guidelines Rulers and the connector plus a uh, uh, seam guide set, we call that a two ruler Perfect for Pattern set. You can also get a three ruler perfect pattern set. By the way, sometimes, wouldn't, isn't it nice to have a three foot ruler sometimes, like bias binding strips, that yes, kind of thing? Yes, absolutely, so, yeah. So yeah, so if you do get three of the rulers, you can actually connect three of them together and have a three foot ruler, or you can make a bigger corner square to square up your edge, so. So let's go back real quickly. So the perfect for pattern set number one, you're mm -hmm. gonna get um, what items here? These two, one okay. ruler, one. So let set. me talk about that real quick. The special pricing that we have on that set is normally $61.85, but we are going to have the special pricing for So Fun Club, $49.99, $49.49, excuse me, better than $99. <laughs> and then we had talked about the Perfect for Patterns um, set two. So mm -hmm. with set two, the additional item would be the additional ruler. Additional ruler and the uh, guidelines ruler connector. So then okay. you've got that six by 12, six by 24, 12 inch square and corner square. Okay, so on that one, it's n retail 76.80, but our special price is 61.49 for all of you out there in virtual so fun club land. So what's next, what's next? Well, you know, you started talking about where did that seven eighths inch come from? Uh huh. We have a system called finished size quilting, okay, and it really deals with where that came from and how to get rid of it. Okay. <laughs> so we'll show that next. Okay, let's get on to it. So we've kept you waiting long enough. <laughs> let's get into that seventh eighth rule, John. Yep, we're going to find out where that came from because a lot of people don't know this. Uh, it just never used to exist in quilting. Seven, mm -hmm. A quilter 40 years ago, if you just said seven eighths rule, like they just said, what? what? What the heck are you talking yeah. about? Because here's what happened. Now, I'm, I'm showing here, would you believe you could make a block like this any size you want? Because you all know it's all these different measurements now. Correct. So what I'm asking here is if this block is a nine inch finish size, what is the finish size of each patch in that block? Ah, you're trying to trick me. Yeah. So I know that if it's finish size, those individual pieces, that make up is gonna be three inches each. That, because I, I knew you would know, but how many of you out there were going what? Three, uh, yes. th uh, so seven eighths Wait, and half me, an inch and, yeah. and my quarter inch? Yeah. And, yeah, because the secret is, that I, what it says here is let's talk about the finish size. And that's correct, the finish sizes are that simple. Because you know, uh, back when they used to make um, the templates, you know, mm -hmm. in fact, you, you know, it's kind of funny because the cereal boxes. They had a use back then. Yeah, they, they actually came out, <laughs> at the time quilting was exploding and they had a big use back then because finish sizes are simple. Three plus three plus three is nine. That's all you have to think about. And that's what they did when they made the uh, templates. Mm -hmm. uh, but they also determined that to hold quilt pieces together, the amount of seam allowance should be a quarter inch. 
They didn't want too much that would add too much bulk, but they needed enough to hold the pieces together. So it was just the standard of let's make these templates where they're the finished size plus a quarter inch. And for every single piece, it was the same. It was simply the finished size plus a quarter inch. Now today, you see all of these measurements. Yes. And where's those seven eighths? And being a are. quilter, <laughs> can I just say when you buy a pattern and you now are ready to start your quilting, you open that pattern up and you see math like that, I know that I go, ah! <laughs> so I like dealing with finished sizes rather than all of the fractions. Yep. And do you know what created all those fractions? Well, the, the rotary cutter because of the way that we were cutting See, things. See, I mean, yes. when you work with people this smart, well, <laughs> they're, just, they're always a step ahead of you, which just, is great. Just educated. Because yeah. mostly, I do, I mean, I do this in places all the time, and very rarely does someone even realize that that changed everything. Right, right. Because it's like they just started out quilting, and they were handed a rotary cutter, and they looked at a pattern, and it said cut two and seven eighths right. and three and a quarter. They had no idea that back in the past, those numbers never even existed. Now, just to prove a point, go to your library and check out a quilting book mm. that's 25, yep. 30 years old, and you will not see cutting for quarter inch. You won't, it'll be patterns. It'll be designs that you have to trace to make your pattern, to make your blocks. Yeah. The rotary cutter has absolutely changed the way that us modern quilters cut. Yeah, it's so good to work with you and talk to you because you really, really get it. And, and, and again, I, I'm not criticizing anyone, but if you don't know, you just think, well, it was always that way. Yeah. But it never was that way. It used to be simply, the, the, it was always a quarter inch seam allowance. You just simply finish size plus a quarter inch. So today, this is what you're doing. The reason it's seven eighths is because you've got these extra edges. Correct. And the reason it's a it's inch and a quarter, like if for a three inch uh, quarter square triangle, the pattern would say four and a quarter because now you got 12 different edges you got to uh, add a quarter inch to. The end result is the same. It's still the finished size plus an extra quarter inch. It's just you have to add that extra amount so that you get there. Yeah, and that would be basically for angled cuts. So if you have half square triangles, quarter inch, quarter inch, it's quarter square <laughs> triangles. <you> <laughs> My tongue got tied. Yep. So it's with all those angles that make quilting so much fun and you get those yeah. very unique blocks with yeah. the additional angles in cutting. And a lot of people, they, they avoid them because they just think it's too complicated. Uh, but there is one other thing. Now this one, I'll be surprised if you knew. Did you know that those measurements for the half and quarter square triangles are not even exactly right? Well, I, I, I will, I have to admit, I know that because I've seen your demos oh, before, okay. but, but before that, I would say, no, I would have assumed that it's going to make a perfect block. But I also know that depending upon the fabrics and you thread, then the fold and how crisp you are when you ironed, that you can get a different size block, which is why a lot of people will deliberately waste fabric, mm -hmm. make their block larger, and then square it up. Yeah. But with your rulers, you're basically going to do it all precise and have the cutting beforehand. Yeah, you, you get the fabric guide to line up accurately, you get the grip strips to hold it accurately, but you also, if you get our seam allowance additions, you add the exact amounts, which I'll show you in just a second. But just, I, I, and this is surprising to people, but the correct amount for a half square triangle is not seven eighths. Seven eighths would be 0.875. Mm -hmm. And it's because of that angle. And what they did back when the rotary cutter came out, they just kept adding until they got as close as they could. To make it easier for us yeah. as far as lining up our rulers. Exactly, yeah. And they couldn't go less than, mm -hmm. so they went a little bit more than. If you went less than, you couldn't add anything back in. So they added a little bit more. So for half square triangles, this is the exact measurement. For quarter square triangles, this is the exact measurement. Okay. And having said all that, of course I've got tools that do this. These Yay. are our seam allowance additions. And in a set here, there's a, a purple one, which is for squares. It, okay. It's simply a half inch wide, because a half inch is exactly what you want to add for a square, because you're just adding a quarter right. on both on sides side. at the yep. same time. This one is for half square triangles, and it adds the 854 thousandths. This one's for the a quarter square triangles, and it adds the 1.207. So it does give you a, le a level of accuracy beyond what you'll get 
if you're just lining up to the lines on the roof. Correct. So I want to show real quick, and I'm going to just put it here. This is what a half square triangle would look like if you're not familiar with it. And this would be the quarter square triangle. So keep in mind that we're only using a quarter of that block as a triangle. And, and you'll notice also that what I'm saying is that everything for this block, which can I see the block on this page or? Friendship no, star? Just, oh, right here, yeah. Yeah. So for this block right here, in, in finished sizes, and if you want to make it nine inches, every piece is three inches. That's all you have to know. No fractions, no complicated math. It's that simple. And if you want to change the size of the block, if you line up to the two inch line, two plus two plus two is six. Correct. <laughs> That's simple. Or for a 12 inch block, three times four is 12. So finished sizes are simple. The additions make that so much easier to do. And all you're going to do, I'm going to take that off for a second. I might get back to it here in a bit is this is my H edition. It's the uh, 0.854. So this is the exact amount that you want to add for a half square triangle. Okay. And all you do is you attach it to the edge of the ruler. So that way it's going to cut everything. It already adds that, that additional yeah. cut so that you can use it. That's, that's just perfect. So you remember when I said, you know, you can go to the two inch line for mm -hmm. two inch, three inch line for three inch. It's now that simple. I can go, if I want to make two inch half square triangles, I just go to that two inch line. And what's happening is I still slide up to the guide. So I'm still catching, oops, let me get it here. There we go. Well, I got, kind of got to do it this way. So I hope you can see if I'm doing it from my perspective. But I still slide up to the guide, so I get that exact width there, but I'm cutting along the edge here. So that, and that's going to allow for the angles. It's, yeah, it's going to add the exact amount of seam allowance I need for the half square triangles. Perfect. And uh, by the way, you, you might have noticed I took my finger guard off, but these have finger guards built yeah, in too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So even when You're you switch to those, we're, we're keeping your fingers safe. And now if I want to make the same size quarter square triangle, this uh, addition here is the exact amount that I need for quarter square triangles. And again, it just snaps onto the edge of it here. And so if I want the two inch again, I'll set my guide to two inches. It's so nice. I don't, you know, it's two, three, four inches for just about anything I want to do. But I can go anywhere in between. You can actually custom size a block any size you want by using mm -hmm. these. And again, what's happening when I cut here, this is going to add a little bit more than the other one, than yeah. this one. And then the purple one adds the smallest amount. This, this is why the numbers are confusing. It's, it's one amount for the squares, a different amount for the half square triangles, and a different right. amount for the quarter square triangles. That's why the pattern has all those confusing fractions in it, and they're different numbers for different pieces. In reality, the finish size of all the pieces is the same. Correct. So yeah. I can make the whole block just by going to the finish size. Okay. So, a little little information on Michelle. So, I design a lot of my own quilts. Oh, you do? So, because of that, I deliberately will make things bigger because I don't want to deal with the math. Mm. Where if these guides, they'll take care of that for me and I don't have to waste the fabric. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, it is a small amount. The difference between 0.875, which is 7 eighths, and the amount these add, it's not a big amount. It's not a big amount, but in quilting, it does matter. Yeah. It yeah. makes a difference. Well, so, and fabric's not cheap. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. This this just makes everything simpler. And we give you these color-coded breakdowns. So mm -hmm. we're showing, like in that block, we're showing all the squares in purple, all the half-square triangles in green, all the quarter-square triangles in red. So pick any size you want, one, two, three inch for the, for the finished size. Follow our little diagram there, and you can make the block any size you want. And believe it or not, every single block you see here all the pieces here are the same finish size. Mm -hmm. So you just make them the uh, two, three inches, all the same. You can pick any block you hear and make it using just one measurement line on your ruler. But of course, there are times when pieces are different sizes. One of my favorite examples is flying, flying geese. Flying geese, yes. So uh, in, when you normally do them, well, the truth is most people never do this with a ruler. <laughs> uh huh. Because if you're adding seven eighths an inch and a quarter, because these are made of half and quarter square triangles, right? So you're adding that little bit measurement that's been rounded up. It's not quite right. So most people use a specialty tool to do this. With our tools, you can get the exact amount here. And the great thing about finish sizes is, if you look at the way they fit together, the quarter square triangle is simply twice as big as the half square triangles. So if I, well, I could ask you this, but if you know the pattern would say five plus inch and a quarter, which would be six and a quarter. Well, what is, what have I got here? Two and a half mm -hmm. plus seven eighths. Three and 
something. <laughs> three and change. Three oh, and you change. got. Yeah, I, th I, I was sure you were going to. I think it's three and three eighths. <laughs> okay. I think it is. But that's that's the point. Is is with finish sizes, you don't think about that. You go simply by the finish size. So any size you want to make them, you know, I, we show them the two and a half by five, or the one and a half by three, or the four by two, six by three. You simply make the quarter square triangle twice as big as the half, right. and you're adding the precise amounts of seam allowance. So you don't have that little built-in error there. So you're, you're going to save on fabric. Mm -hmm. You're going to save on brain strength. You're not going to yeah. have to worry <laughs> about doing the math because these simple little guides that you add to your rulers are going to take away that stress and aggravation from our lives. Finish sizes are simple common sense. You know, that's that the rotary cutter, again, nobody's going to give it up. But what we lost was is that connection between the measurements we use to cut the pieces and how they actually fit together. Because again, like flying geese, you can see that the quarter square triangle is twice as big as the half. Yes. And so it, it, it just becomes that simple. But there is one other step. Because back when they made the templates, uh, and, oh, in fact, I always like to use this example. Um, if you, you've used one of the die cutters, right? Absolutely, yeah. yes. Well, uh, the point I'm making is that what the, the die cutter, what it does is it gives you the pieces, the exact finish size plus the exact quarter inch. Nobody trims those pieces down. No, you can't. No because they come out the right size to start with. Right, and I, and I love that because they line up pers perfectly. You don't exactly. have the dog ears. Right. Now, I, I, as much as I can, because I don't mind saying this, I don't make a die cutter, but I love them too. But there's one drawback is you have to have a separate die for every single piece you want to cut. Correct. So actually our finished size quilting set makes a nice complement to that because you can fill in any gaps and get that exact same accuracy because there's another tool that comes with our finished size quilting sets. This is called our prep tool. And one thing it does is it makes it real easy to accurately trim those uh, dog ears so that you can line the pieces up accurately. And I'll move that So again if you don't know what a dog ear is, let me give you a real quick. Um, a dog ear is when you do the half inch triangles and I'm gonna hold up at the end of the corners here, you see that we have the leftover bit sticking up and you wanna get rid of those because they add to bulk. But with John's ruler, he has this special tool where it's going to get rid of it for us. Yeah. Now, w if you're doing that, you don't necessarily have to pre-trim them. But for something like flying geese, to line them up right, you do have to pre-trim them. So it's not something you have to do every time, but it sure comes in handy when you do. So the prep tool just has little lip edges on it. And again, I'm all about taking the guesswork out of it. So the lip edge just catches the edge of the fabric there. Mm -hmm. And then you slide it down. When it catches between those two, that's where you're going to trim it. Perfect. So again, it, it lines itself up to the fabric's edge. It just takes the guesswork out of doing it. And what that's going to let you do, if I get that back in the right spot there. Let me see. I'm going to turn it just a little bit so we get rid of that angle there or that go. glare. So you can see down here, that's what you're doing. Is you're trimming off that point, and, the, and the, the lips on there just catch the edge of the fabric, making it e easy to do. And by trimming both of those uh, dog ears, now you can just simply line the edges up and it's going to match perfectly. And the other point is, is that you do want to be sure you sew that scant quarter again because that's going to make the points stay pointy. If you sew a full quarter, the points wind up buried. So the finished size quilting sets also come with the tool I've already showed here, our seam guide setter. So that's going to help you sew the pieces together accurately. So and that's great. You're saving our points, which is always a big thing when we're quilting. Um, so if you use the, the prep, prep tool. tool, you're going to be able to keep your points on those angled cuts for our blocks. Yeah, yeah. We'll actually trim them off mm -hmm. so that the edges line up. Like if you're, if you're doing a, a triangle to a square, there's a lot of cases where pre-trimming does help. Because if you don't, don't pre-trim them, it can be hard to line them up. If you trim it, then the edges will match and it makes it much easier to line them up. Uh, and then one other thing is it's also great because there's a lot of times when the, when the pattern says stop a quarter inch from the end. Yes, yeah. Y seams. Y seams the is a great example. The dreaded Y seams. Yeah. Or yes. even just mitered binding corners. Yes, yeah. yeah. So this tool also makes it easy to do that. In fact, I'll show you, this would be like a Y seam. This is a 45 degree diamond. Mm -hmm. So again, the little prep tool has lip edges on it that just catch the edge of the fabric. So scoot up to the edge of the fabric oh and you can mark. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah. Plus, it's, it's actually the true seam line, the scant quarter seam yeah. line. Yeah. So it actually gives you a really precise marking. So you can just go around and mark your stopping and starting point. Same thing with a mitered binding corner. It gives you that ability to mark it exactly the same every time. And I, and I tell you, if you're doing a Lone Star quilt with all those diamonds, 
that tool is going to be worth its weight in gold. Oh, you, you just reminded me of a story. This, this actually happened where a quilter I ran into at Road to California, one of the big shows out here, and she had a Lemoyne Star quilt mm -hmm. all cut out, and for six months it was a UFO, uh -huh. which we all know, <laughs> an unfinished object, right? Uh, uh, it wasn't me, but a retailer showed her how to use this. She not only completed the quilt, but she took third place at that year's roll. Oh, wow. That's yeah. amazing. And she yeah. said without this tool, it just wasn't yeah. happening because it just it does take all the guesswork out of it. And um, in fact, uh, if I can here, if you don't mind cutting something, I'll have you sure. actually do a little thing. I cut, I pre-cut, or, or not pre-cut, but I got some squares here to make it easy. What do you think of these would go together well? They're all kind of coordinated. But. Oh, absolutely. They look like they came out of a charm pack. They work in my book. Okay. I love bright, bold fabrics. No, pick any three you think would go together Okay. Well. Let's go with these three. All right. So what I'm going to do is put the S edition on the edge of the ruler, which I've got buried. Oh, it's right here. Okay. And I've got this set to uh, two inches. We'll just do two inch. So go ahead and cut a two inch square out of any one of those. Do you want us to do it individually or stacked? No, no, just individually, because I'm okay. going to have you do use the H and the Q edition on the other pieces. Uh-oh. Yeah, just pull that back. There, there you go. we go. You can see I use a different one. And just, by, just a little, uh, you, it, it worked fine, but you can put your finger right on there. And okay. It's right behind the finger guard, and that'll really get the pressure on the edge there. Yeah, and then go ahead and cut it into a square. You didn't know I was going to have you do this, did yeah. you? Yeah. There we go. Okay. Now, what we're going to do, we'll set this aside, and we'll switch to the green one. So this is now going to do for the half square triangle, but you're not going to change the measurement. Okay. So whichever one you want to make a half square triangle out of. Well, we're going to go with this one, the green. Yep. And then just try put, put your finger on there. In when the you center. Can, no, right on, right on this. Oh, okay. What that's doing is that's putting the pressure right on the edge there. So we're going to pull that away. Mm -hmm. Flip my fabric, line it up again to yep. where the guide, push on the center, and simply cut. Yep. So you can see the difference here in the size. Okay, and then one last one, we'll do a quarter square triangle. And again, we're keeping the measurement the same every single time. All right. So what John is saying, we haven't switched the center mark here. Exactly. All that we've switched is the guide mm -hmm. for the seams. So here you can see the difference in the size of them. But I'm just going to, we'll, we'll cut to my, the end result here, is after you trim the triangle points, this is what you get. There you go. So that's what I did here. These are all, I think these are all two inch two, I believe. Yes, I'm pretty sure they are. So what we did then is we, we you know, cut them into the uh, uh, halves and the quarters and then took the prep tool and trimmed the points off because you won't see the edges match until you actually trim the points. But this will be your end result. And like you said earlier, it's nice when they line up correctly. Oh, my gosh. You, yeah, then you sew that accurate scant quarter inch to sew them together. Mm -hmm. And basically, in finished size quilting, you can make any block any size you want. And uh, for most people, uh, most of the blocks, you'll be able to figure out how they go together without even needing a pattern, because finish sizes are just simple common sense. Yes, they are. Oh, and just one last thing, the, the additions, the prep tool, the connectors, actually all that stuff's made of polycarbonate, so it's all virtually unbreakable. So it's all gonna last for, for the lifetime, which is great, which is great. Yep. So I love that. I love that um, it's taken a lot of the math, the frustration, um, a lot of the guesswork out of it with these simple tools that are going to make your your quilting blocks more precise and that's all that's what we want as a quilter and yep. and I can't tell you how many times especially here at show show and tell that we have someone hold up their quilt that they've worked so hard on and the first thing they do is point out where their points don't line up or things aren't perfect we're all imperfect, but if we get a tool to help us be more precise from the start, then we're going to have less of that frustration. And who wants to be frustrated? Not me. Yeah, not <laughs> I either. <laughs> yeah, like that file I tried to send you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, a little inside story yes. here. We had a little problem sending a file back and forth. Very frustrating, but yeah, that's that's nobody wants to be frustrated. No. Same thing with quilting. And I, I, I'll just, I mean, there's things like square in a square. I showed you flying geese. This just takes all the math out of pretty much any traditional thing you want to do. 
Now, in one of them, does it come with some a booklet or something that gives you the information and the directions yeah. for your products? Yeah, it sure does. Uh, we show like everything I was showing you there on the uh, uh, the. Uh, we, we, this is a double friendship star and the color coded. Um, I could I should have brought one separately, but on the inside are all those color coded breakdowns. The same one I showed you over here. Very good. Yeah, and it shows so the that you'll have square and a square. Yeah, they'll be able to figure it out completely yep. on their own. Super easy, and I love that everything's precise, and if you look on the back here, you can already see everything that John's already told us in our video here. It's all right there on the packaging. Yep. So, we should go back over some of the products, and I want to talk real briefly. Um, you're going to be able to pick up those individual things as well, oh, but you know we are only talking... Um, and showing tonight the kits, but I want you to know that individually, if you just need one or two things, you're going to be able to do that also um, on our landing page for Virtual Soap Fun Club. Uh, yeah, well, I was just going to say, the finished size quilting sets come with the seam allowance editions, the guidelines ruler, the seam guide setter, and the prep tool. Here's the prep tool. There's here. the prep tool. It was so hiding. Yeah, this gives you everything to do, everything I showed you for finished size quilting. Okay, so do we want to go over those individual kits real quick now? Sure. Okay, so let's go over set number one. What's included? Yeah, basically it's the same idea. This okay. is just one ruler and then the other tools that you need. The second one is a two ruler finish size quilting sets, which honestly most people, that's kind of the minimum mm -hmm. because then you can make the six by 24 to cut the first strip from the full width of fabric. Yes. And you can put uh, an addition on each ruler. So you can actually connect them so if I'm doing uh, quarter square triangles and I need to do my full width of fabric, if I knew where my connector was, I'd, oh, there, <laughs> of course I buried it, it under there for myself. <laughs> so you can uh, do this. Oh, by the way, this will actually reminds me of another really good point here. So here I've got connected as a 24 so I can do the full width of fabric. I'm adding my exact amount for my quarter square triangles. But then the great thing is when I go to cut it into squares, the measurements stay the same. So I can just take it apart, leave it set, go down, cut them into squares. Correct. That's actually, I'm glad that we got to that because that's another big advantage of being connectable is that you're always cutting the same measurement when you cut the strip as you cut it into squares. So with the two ruler finished size quilting set, you get two of the rulers and the connector and two of the seam allowance additions. And then with the three ruler set, uh, it has, the only addition it has is one extra ruler and another connector. connector. So you can to make the three them, foot yeah. ruler or the big corner square. And that's really the only difference between the two okay. and the three. Okay, so we have the, the set one with one set, one ruler, um, and we have the retail is, looks like sixty six eighty five. but our special So Fun Club price is only fifty three forty nine okay. for that. Isn't that great? Now our second one, which includes that additional ruler as well as the additional um, seam allowance additions, and that is 133.70 retail, and we have the special price that we've secured here for Moore's customers for 106.99. And the last one, which is the one I think everyone should have, to be honest with you, because you're going to be able to do all the cuts that you need for all of your quilting. 170.60 is the retail, and with our special So Fun Clive price, it's only 136.49. Can you believe it? And that's basically the set that you're going to want to get because you get everything and you're going to be able to make all those cuts for all the blocks that you need. That is true. Okay, <laughs> so let's go over um, the perfect for pattern kits mm -hmm. and go over the prices for those. Now, the difference in the product is, is basically the same or? Yeah, well, it doesn't have the prep tool or the seam allowance. Either. Okay. So if you're following a pattern, you know, the pattern's just going to give you the uh, measurement to cut. Okay. Which again, it does have that little error in it, but I'm not, you're not really going to try to convert from a pattern to finish size quilting. So this set lets you easily follow a pattern, set the guide to the measurements it gives, and then uh, sew them together accurately with the seam. Right, and that's what we want for that sewing machine to make sure that we're guiding them in for those perfect seams. Yep. So on set number one, which includes one ruler, mm -hmm. we have the special Sew Fun Club price for $31.99. And then on set two, which has two rulers, mm -hmm. we have the special Sew Fun Club price at $61.49. And then the last one, our set number three, three rulers and two of the connectors 
And that special cell phone pro club price, excuse me, is $90.99. So once again, special pricing, and we're so glad that you brought these things in for us tonight. And I wanna go over real quick the perfect for pattern sets. And if you can, um, put up here what what comes with those now you mean that with the quote roller upgrade kit yes yes oh i actually said i have to grab them here okay all right excuse me yeah so with regular again this this is nice because you, you're using the rulers you already have correct so it has the connector for the regular acrylic rulers it's got the upgrade kit that'll let you add the guides and the grip strips to both your 12 and 24 and then the seam guide setter and again if you're following a pattern it's great because you just set the guide to whatever the pattern says. You're going to cut a lot more accurately. The ruler's not going to slip on you. And you use this to make a corner square to get the edge squared up initially. And then when you sew them together, you use your seam guide setter. Now, what I want to say is this is perfect if you do not want to invest in another ruler. But I know once you get these, these tools and you start using them, you're going to think, I wish I would have got that other set. <laughs> and I wish I would have got the rulers because they're going to make it that much more easier. But we have the, those ruler sets and we have them. Well, this <laughs> has been wonderful. And I know that our customers are going to get a lot out of our virtual so fun club. And we really enjoyed having you here this month. Thank you for coming. Thank you for enlightening us. We love your products and I know our customers will too. So with that said, thank you so much, John. Thank you. And thank you, George. I mean, uh, like I said, this is one of the premier shops in the world. And it's just really an honor to be able to come here and show the tools here and to work with someone as knowledgeable as Michelle. Really, I really enjoyed it. Oh, thank you, John. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate it. And I've learned a lot here tonight, too. So oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much. And one last thing I want to add for our virtual so fun club. We have brought back show and tell. So you're going to have a chance to win a $20 gift card that we're going to be able to let you use um, virtually. So you're going to be able, it doesn't matter where you are, you're going to be able to use that on our website. So you're going to want to, at the end of this here, you're going to want to share your show and tell with your pictures on our feed. And then we will draw a name and after our virtual so fun club about april 30th we will then announce the name of our winner i can't wait to see all the wonderful things that you have made it's one of my favorite things for any show and tell um, at so fun club because i get inspired so much seeing what everyone else is making out there and with that said i want to thank john once again from guidelines from quilting I know you got a lot out of it, and I know you're going to want to pick up his products. And we will look forward to seeing you next month on So Fun Club. And until then, have a wonderful day. Stay safe out there, and happy stitching!